Lucky Brazza, the city bird as you wait. Then it is that time of the year, the collective attention of the cricketing world, the envy of the cricketing world, as in its 17th edition, the IPL returns. 74 games, 10 teams, 2 months, and it all kick starts at the Chepok with the defending champions, the Chennai Super Kings, the new look Ruturaj Gaikwad's Chennai Super Kings against a very different looking RCB, at least in Jersey, if not in personnel. We have so much to look forward to in this season. And we bring back the very same Maruti Suzuki Arena presents ESPN Trick Info Timeout. But there'll be a few things that are new uh, on this edition of the show as well. Tom Moody is not one of those, but I welcome him back uh, fondly into our studios. You like what we've done with the place, Tom? I do like it. It's very generous for you to, you know, to offer your couch for the show. Yeah, I, as you've <laughs> seen, that I'm not a very generous man. And Mitchell <laughs> McClanagan knows that uh, because that's, why, that's how he's accepted my invitation to come here. Just out of pure love. But it's, it's an absolute pleasure to have you, Mitch. It's the first time you're with us in our studios. We've pulled you through from that big screen. Happy? Yeah, it looks good, actually. Uh, I'd like us to get a little bit tighter. Uh, just get a little bit more love in the room would yeah, be just great. Just squeeze him right now next to yeah, him. Just penalize him for sledging me first. <laughs> I'll get yeah. <laughs> just maintaining the calm and balance will be Wasim Jafar. Sir, very good evening to you. Very good evening, yeah. Ronak. Are we excited? Something about this IPL that is perhaps different. It marks almost the end of an era, as we discussed yesterday, Tom, with the big news that MS Dhoni will not be captaining this franchise. It's still as difficult, as challenging a league to win. Oh, there's, without a doubt, it's one of the hardest leagues to win. And uh, there's one team that's playing tonight that knows that better than anyone, RCB, yeah. yet to win a trophy, and they've been in it since the inception. So, um, yeah, I'm very excited about uh, what this year is to offer because we've got some... Some uh, ageing greats that are coming to the end of their careers, whether that be this year or soon after that. And we've got some incredibly exciting young talent coming through that want to make it their tournament. Yeah. So, you know, watching that unfold is going to be very interesting. Yeah, there's something about this tournament as well, which has the expectations up, the buzz up, maybe a bit more than last year because of those returning and some big announcements made by the franchises. We'll talk more, of course, of Gaikwad and CSK, but... He now just joins a list of uh, returning and newly appointed captains, Hardik Pandya, making the uh, big switch from GT to MI. He'll be captaining the Mumbai Indians in their first game against GT on Sunday. Rishabh Pant returns. He'll be in action tomorrow afternoon against the Punjab Kings. Shubman Gill's taken over for Hardik's place at the Titans. Shreya Sayer back in KKR colours. Pat Cummins, huge money signing and huge call by SRH to name him captain ahead of uh, Aidan Markram. Look at that list, Mitch McClanagan. Who's got the most work cut out for them? Well, the most work cut out for them uh, would probably be Gaikwad because he's stepping into some massive shoes. <laughs> he really is. Uh, to, I guess the positive thing for him is that MS Dhoni's still on the field. That experience hasn't left the field, hasn't left that playing 11. And I'd imagine he'll have the opportunity to still lean on him throughout the game. So they still have a lot of experience. But in terms of making the decisions, when he's discussing with the bowler at the top of the mark, that's where it's going to be a bit more difficult for him because MS Dhoni is going to be 30 metres away. He's also such an important player for the Super Kings, Rituraj Gaikwad. And that's because the Gaikwad-Conway partnership has been a huge factor in their success. It was last season. There's no Devin Conway, at least for eight weeks. We may not even see him this tournament. So the responsibility was even more on Gaikwad, the batter. And as we just look at how some of the top batters have been rated by Crick Info's ratings, you will find Rituraj Gaikwad as well as Shubman Gill in Crick Info's top-rated batters. This is after we've broken it down using our uh, smart stats and getting the high-impact results. And you see Shubman and Gaikwad in our top uh, five list. The challenge is Wasim Jafar with Shubman captaining and Gaikwad captaining a full season for the first time with very little captaincy experience at mm. this level behind them. Whether that will affect the batters that, that they are. It does. It does affect uh, franchise cricket. is is lot different uh, to your state cricket or or any other cricket, uh, and especially when you are on the field, you, you have chased the leather, uh, you have conceded more than 200 runs, and you go out and bat in 10 minutes' time. Sometimes can affect you, uh, and to handle a large group uh, of players and support staff, uh, you being a captain for the first time, there are some, uh, you know, really big uh, <coughs> uh, people around. You know, from world over. And to address the team meeting and, and to focus on that takes a lot out of you. So I feel those two guys, especially uh, Shubman, like you've asked Mitch, 
Shubman and yeah. uh, Ruturaj, I feel they've got the you know task cut out for them. Ruturaj for obvious reasons, uh, MS Dhoni, uh, and Shubman Gill for again uh, he won't have Mohammad Shami, he won't have uh, uh, Hardik Pandya, Pandya there, yeah. sure. and that's a big shoes to fill. Uh, and he hasn't captained at all. So I feel those two guys have a task cut out for them. Yeah, if you were either Ashish Nehra or Stephen Fleming, I know you'd love their job. It'll come in time, <laughs> should you still be willing to accept. But there is, Wasim saying simply, yes, it can affect their batting. It's not just an observation or an opinion. Let's look at the numbers, because there are a number of captains here, batting captains, Hardik Pandya, Tom, Rishabh Pant, Sanju Samson. This is the three seasons before they took up uh, the captaincy of their franchise, striking between 145 and 170. And as they become captains, Tells a story, doesn't it? It certainly does. I, I think uh, Hardik Pandya's uh, numbers there uh, displayed is more to do with the, the role that he had at GT against what he had before, um, where he was a, more of a finisher. So naturally a strike rate is mm. going to be uh, right up there. But it, it definitely does weigh on, on shoulders. In some cases, you see players grow in stature when they're given that opportunity and they seem mm. to thrive. And... Pat Cummins is one of those. We've mm -hmm. seen over the last 24 months since he's taken over captaincy, he's nearly gone to another level as a fast bowler in different formats, obviously. But, um, you know, it is a challenge. And the, the bubble of the IPL is a unique challenge. And unless you've actually been in that, you know, bubble, and these two gentlemen have been in that bubble, know very well the pressures. And, and it's just constant. You know, it is a constant roller coaster, and it never goes away. Yeah, it's right. taxing. It's definitely very mentally fatiguing, and, mm. and that's Gokhal won't be able, and Gil won't be able to to step away from that. They can't just go back to the room because they're going to have to have discussions with the coach, discussion mm. with senior players. They're all going to have those discussions with the mm. owners as well if they don't perform more than likely. So mm. that's the additional pressure. You from put a thought in my head when they go back to their room. Don't they get the suite now? Oh, yes. Yeah. Surely not. Don't they do? Surely don't they? MS Doni gets just a Surely room MS or... Still or I reckon they'll find another suite. <laughs> they'll find another suite. Or floor. It remains sacrosanct, isn't <laughs> yeah. it? The IPL captains all get a suite, from what I remember, yes? They do, I think, yeah. And, but still, it's a room. Uh, still, it's a very lonely place if you're not doing well. Oh my. Well, that depends. No, I mean, you could always have company. Uh, the coach <laughs> is always there. The players always come in. That's what we know. MS Doni has been known to leave that door open in all the good old days when he used to captain. But there's, a going, there's going to be something new about CSK. In Gaikwad CSK, we'll see the Dhoni connection. There's also something new on the show here. Tom Moody is going to be put on the spot as head coach. And he has a message for Uttaraj Gaikwad, the captain. This is our segment that we call Hey Captain. All right, Tom. Take it away. Uttaraj Gaikwad is listening to you. Go okay. for it. Okay. Hey, Uttaraj. Firstly, congratulations on this great honour to lead a very successful franchise. Most importantly, though, as captain, make this team your team. I know MS is going to be out in the middle, and yes, you can lean on him, and I'd advise you to lean on him, but always go with your gut feel. If you feel it's the right time to make a change in the field or a bowling change or a batting order change, you go for it. And you can guarantee the support staff, me, the owners, will back you 100%. And remember... Be the batter, the S, CSK, I should say, CSK, absolutely have fallen in love with and dominate with a bat and park the captaincy while you're at the crease. You, Good luck. You were just method. You were Robert De Niro there. You went SRH. You almost said SRH. No, 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 so no. I just got my S's and C's mixed <laughs> oh, up. Yeah. But I liked it. You took it so sincerely that you're remembering. Yeah. I, was, I was in the game there. Yeah. I, was, I was right in the game. Yeah. All right. Well, I do hope Prithraj gets to watch this tomorrow when he has his phone back. He doesn't have it right now. He's going to be attending his first toss as captain in a few minutes. And we'll come to that in just a second. But let's just remind you of what else is new. We have new captains, as announced most recently by CSK. There are some significant rule changes as well. One of those being the two-bouncer rule. That's, that could very well have a say in this year's IPL. Uh, and I think Mitch McLennigan's a happy man. <laughs> He's almost grinning like yeah. this was an evil plan that's come to fruition. Yeah, look, I love it. Um, well, actually, I actually really enjoyed the IPL last year in terms of the runs scored. I, I liked mm. the, the impact player. Um, that kind of made it a bit more exciting, a lot more boundaries. But I guess they, as a bowler, you, you feel the pain for the young guys coming through that, that the rule change did have a significant impact um, in, in favour of the batters. So 
I think it's great. Uh, it's going to be really interesting. I think it's it's going to be obviously at the end of, at, in the death phase. A lot of players look to go to the Yorkers, and there's a lot of good Yorker bowlers around. But I think this is a rule that those Yorker players, the bowlers, really need to take advantage of because when you have that one bouncer, uh, guys, once you've bowled it, guys can set up for that fuller delivery. Um, and I think now with that, if you don't bowl it to it, you can bowl two in the over now. I think it's going to be a little bit more or a little bit harder for the batter to kind of set up for that other delivery. You so. see that having a significant impact tactically, though, the fact that a bowler can bowl two bounces or is just going to be one of those things that we barely notice. For certain bowlers, it's going to be a great weapon. For others, it could be costly. Um, you've got to have a good bouncer. Um, otherwise, you could pay dearly. Um, at the end of the day, it's nice to have that uncertainty from a bowling perspective because that is one advantage you have, is having that uncertainty of what you're delivering, whether that be pace on, pace off, short ball, Yorker, wide, straight, whatever it is. But to me, I think it's going to be risk-reward. We're going to see some, some bowlers really benefit from this new rule and others are going to be poorly misled thinking it's the right option. If you were with a, a franchise now as batting coach, would you be working on this with batters? I mean, we all know the likes of Ashreya Sayer. Everyone likes to target him with the short ball. Does the two bouncer rule in any way affect how batters will prepare for this IPL? I think what Tom said is, is pretty right. Uh, sometimes even uh, when you've got only one bouncer, then you know uh, everything is going to be around here. Mm. Uh, so that way it can help the bowlers. But at the same time, it can go... Uh, I don't think any bowlers will like to bowl two bounces to Rohit Sharma. So players who takes it on uh, with the white ball, it does go. So it can be very expensive. Uh, somebody who uses it very nicely, uh, and especially to the bowlers who bowl 145 clicks and more, they'll be the one who will probably get more benefit out of it uh, because uh, especially the uncapped players yeah. who haven't faced that kind of pace, you know, will get rattled a little bit. Not the international stars, I feel. Mm, I mean, it is still the same size of grounds that we have in our part of the world, isn't it? Mm. So we wait and see if the two-bouncer rule is something that will have a significant impact. Now let's have some fun here. The toss is slightly delayed. Anyway, it's a delayed start today. Opening ceremony and all the fireworks have uh, gone off at the Chepok. We're going to have uh, the first ball at 8 o'clock. The toss will be uh, at uh, 40 minutes past 7, so just under 10 minutes from now. We'll have you covered with teams as soon as that happens. But Tom, Mitch and Wasim are going to be with us quite regularly right through this season. So we might as well uh, put them to the test. Let's see how far they can gaze into the future. We have asked them to give us so their season predictions. Right. So this is what we're going to do and it's going to be a recurring theme. I'm going to ask you for uh, a safe prediction, uh, a moderate one and an outrageous one. Right. And we're going to try and give you some points at the end of the season. Uh, mm -hmm. So let's see what you guys have have actually called. We've had some time talking to them. Wasim Jaffer, let me have a look at your safe, moderate and uh, outrageous predictions. Let's put it as bold. Mitch and Tom, you can react to this as well. Jaiswal will hit the most sixes. That is very safe. Yeah. yeah. Pant will play like he's never been away. Hmm. And there will be a first-time champion. Jaiswal will hit the most sixes as a safe one. Yeah. Jeez, look, I know he's been playing really good cricket been playing good aggressive That's cricket. normal, isn't that safe? I mean, he's got 26 or 28 sixes in the test series, so... He's got to beat every other player in the whole competition. It was only England, <laughs> though, sir. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And I, I think you got the wrong tournament. <laughs> <laughs> wrong ball. Yeah, that, that would be... The other, the other picks I really like, um, I think. Uh, they're good options. Uh, mm. that, so, first-time champion I'm interested in, which means, which narrows us down to Punjab Kings... DC, uh, RCB, DC, DC LSG. and LSG. Yeah, we might be able to see that. I mean, RCB winning, it, it's been a good year for them. Mm. Of course, as we know, ominous uh, omens are good with the WPL win. So you're going with out of those four if you're to pick one? I won't hold you hold it against you. I would say LSG or Punjab. Oh, mm. Okay. All right. That's Wasim Jaffer. Let's have a look at uh, Mitch McClanagan's now. All right, Tom, have some fun with this. Um, Mohsin Khan in the top five wicket takers. We haven't seen Mohsin Khan for a while, yeah. haven't we? Injured. Mumbai yeah. making the playoffs. Safe. Very safe. <laughs> and Fraser McGurk to score 50 plus on his debut. Now he's been picked up as a replacement player by the Delhi Capitals. And Mitch McClanagan's looking forward to seeing him. Hmm. Well, we might have to wait for the back end of the tournament to see that. 
50 runs from Fraser <laughs> McGurk. Um, even though you're pushing him to, I want play, to play the very game first one. game. First game. <laughs> Come on, Ricky, if you watch yeah. him, put him in there. Yeah. What was your second one? What was your, what was your bold one? Uh, my bold Khan. one was Mosin Khan, top five wicket yeah. taker. Yeah, look, uh, I think that's wishful thinking as well because he's had a lot of injury issues. Um, it's hard to take wickets when you're in the physio room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, look, I said, yeah. Oh, I understand that. Look, he's um, you, he's you a good come, bowler, though. He's, he's no a very question. good bowler. He yeah. really is a good bowler, and he's he's very unlike a lot of your Indian bowlers. He he hits the deck, and on the radar, he might come up at one thirty seven, one thirty eight, but he feels like he's one forty four, one forty five. So mm. it's a great skill, and mm. and he gets onto the bat nice and hard. So I think he'll uh, he'll be a, a very good bowler. Look, I was going to go top three, but so I'll give myself a little bit of leeway. <laughs> yeah, why not? Why not? And. Um, and the safe one is, of course, that I will make the playoffs. Are you still employed by your former <laughs> franchise, Mr. Flanagan? <laughs> I must congratulate you on the ILT20 win. Well done. Yeah. But uh, is that now still sort of... Is that oh, a prediction for am I going look, to be safe from you? Look, I think in terms of batting power. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, mate. Give me a I'm break. I'm not saying Give anything. Give me a break. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> I, I think it's very safe. Because <laughs> you, it, you it, it's, my, it's, it's, it's going to be my safe one as well. Because <laughs> <laughs> you, you never know what's enough. around the corner. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, look, with the heart of Pandia coming back, uh, I think it just bolsters. Gives Tim, Tim David another partner at the back end as well. Mm. Takes that pressure off. So if one doesn't fire, the other one will. So. My God, that team has so many guns. That <laughs> it is powerful. So, yeah, we wait to see you on Surya Kumar Yadav, of course. We'll come to that later on Sunday. Now let's go for Tom Moody, who is seasoned at this game. Is he not? Safe as Mumbai will make the playoffs. <laughs> there You've it done is. the same there thing, Thomas. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, to me, that's an obvious one. To me, at this stage, they look the best team on paper. But that doesn't mean anything once the tournament starts. But... At the moment, they look the best team on paper. So I'd be absolutely shocked if they're not in the top four. Let me come back to that. You've copied one from Mitch and copied one. I haven't, copied, I haven't <laughs> copied anything because we've Just done this independently. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I had no idea what my esteemed colleagues had, had done overnight. <laughs> right. So you think it's a bold call that Jess will end up as the leading six hitter? Yeah. Look, I don't think it's safe. Mm. But it wouldn't surprise me at all if he does send a few bombs and into the top of the charts. And now... Let's just spend some time before we get to the third one. I'd like for everyone to just make note and take it in. The Super Kings not to make the playoffs. You know, I made this prediction That's got a few to years with back. And I'm still, I still haven't visited Chennai since. They won it that year. Tell me why, Tom. Well, I think um, even before yesterday, the announcement of MS Dhoni stepping down from captain, I... I feel that uh, the team is not as strong as it has been. And I know that MS Dhoni historically has made good of not much in mm. the past. But with what happened yesterday with him stepping aside and Rutaraj getting his opportunity to lead the side, I think that has a significant impact on that side's um, campaign. Um, and I don't look at it... Uh, uh, around the fact that you know MS Dhoni's you know effectiveness with bat and behind the stumps is compromised because that won't be because he'll he'll deliver there. It's more the aura and the the X factor that he brings to the dressing room, but more importantly, what he brings to yeah. the centre, out in the middle, he makes something of nothing. And an inexperienced captain, even though he's done it at domestic level, will not have that magic wand okay. that MS Dhoni's got. All right, at your own peril, you predict that CSK may finish outside the playoff spots, and that is Tom Moody's outrageous prediction. Fair enough. Now, we, they'll also be joined by a number of uh, guests on this year's show, so let's have a look at some predictions around the room from the rest of the panel of ESPN Quick Info Time. I think Rutaraj Gaikwad. Glenn Maxwell. Oh, uh, let's go with Rinko Singh. Cameron Green, he's, he's been in really good form. Has to be Rashid Khan because I don't see any other player adding the kind of value that he does consistently. So he's a safe uh, pick. Oh, some good teams. Uh, I think it's going to be Mumbai, Lucknow, Chennai, and Delhi. I'll give you three. Am I Lucknow, RCB? RCB, RR, LSG. And CSK. CSK, 
जी टी आर आर एंड आर सी बी Right, we look forward to the company of the likes of Stephen Smith, Sanjay Manjrekar, Varun Aaron, uh, Deep Das Gupta. They'll all be joining us very shortly. I, I did mention Sanjay Manjrekar in that I am looking forward to his company. Are you? I, I can't wait to see him. Just to talk, I want him to talk me through his new look. What do you make of that look? I'm still trying to get my head around it, to be honest <laughs> with you. But I've got time. If we've got a week or two, I might be able to sort of grow a nice sort of silver beard as well and uh, match him. Okay. Well, let's get serious about the cricket. At the chair park, the toss has gone down. Rithraj Gaikwad has just had his first toss as CSK captain and he's lost it. Faf Duplessis and the Royal Challengers Bangalore will bat first in the season opener of IPL 2024. Let's get a quick reaction here. Tosses at the chair park. I mean, it was, it's an interesting one from what we mm. saw last year, Vaseem. You remember a thrilling game which... Punjab chased and yeah. won. It wasn't easy otherwise to chase though. How significant is this, is this first toss result? It surprises me. Uh, I thought the teams would probably look to chase uh, because of the due. Uh, you know what happened uh, in the other games as well in the World Cup. Uh, yeah. So I'm a little surprised uh, knowing that uh, Royal Challengers Bangalore doesn't have a very strong bowling attack. So it does surprise me. Mitch? Yeah, I've got a theory on this. I think at the start of the tournament, I think it takes a little bit more time for batters to find their rhythm and how to pace an innings and chase a total. And, and bowlers are, are able to, to defend scores earlier in the tournament a little bit better. Uh, I think batters seem to take a little bit more time to, to be able to, to, to chase a, a down a total. If it's, it's pretty if a good eloquent, score way, board. eloquent way of telling us who you think. Uh, yeah, he's obviously a bowler, isn't he? <laughs> 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 Clearly, yeah. batters have got no hope. Um, the, the one thing that I take is, is that to me, the Jew is a potential factor. Mm. But secondly, the point that wasn't made, I think, is right on the money. And that is, is that when you clearly on paper are a strong batting unit, you want to be able to chase because you go with your strength. Mm. The bowling's not their strength. So to, to defend whatever um, is on offer is going to be difficult when you don't have that sort of trump card as your, as your strength. So they don't really have any real standout sort of world-class spinners or whatever it might be. Mm. Uh, it's also an 8 o'clock start. Make note of that because I know for a long time the word was that MS Dhoni used to be the biggest advocate of the delayed start. Mm. It took away uh, any advantage that 7 p.m., 7.30 mm. used to be a little more significant. So it's an 8 o'clock start just for this uh, opening day. Uh, we're just going to try and get to you, the new teams as soon as we possibly can. Uh, that There is a big call that CSK need to make though. They'll be bowling first. They're going to have to find a slightly improved bowling performance from last year. Matisha Patirana was one of their most important bowlers. I believe he's injured. We'll just wait for confirmation of it. But just as we look at the impact he had, it still remains remarkable, doesn't it, Tom, that they won the IPL with that bowling lineup. With due respect to Tushar Desh Pandey, Deepak Chair was out for a lot of it. Uh, they had Patirana who led their pack. Now Shardul Thakur has been added. Mustafizur has been added. But they did manage to win. Patirana was so far ahead of the others. An economy of eight with 18 wickets. That was the rest of, uh, of CSK's lineup last year. And most of those overs were at the back end of the innings yeah. from Patirana. And I, I think w what screams out to me when I, when I look at that sort of bowling and how they went about it last year was, again, the value of MS Dhoni. How he manages our bowlers, you, you quite often see... Uh, captains get frustrated with bowlers when they have a bad over. You quite often, you know, you see sort of rash decisions around that. And Mitch will know this firsthand as, as, as someone that's, um, you know, played under many captains. It, it is a tough, tough art bowling in T20 cricket. And you can have a reasonably good over that goes for 18 runs mm. or 20 runs just because you get a couple of outside edges, top edges that go for six, whatever it might be. Mm. So it's the management of your bowlers that's so important. And that's mm. what MS Dhoni's real art was. This is also a reflection of a franchise that has just mastered the management game in the IPL, in franchise cricket. Now, Stephen Fleming caught up with ESPN Cricket for recently. Sid Monga uh, just tried to get some insight into the culture and the philosophy of the Super Kings at the back of uh, yet another IPL win last season. Let's try and break this down for some time. A lot of temptation to dive into many things, analytics, high performance, different practices from other sports, says Flem. But uh, one principle is keep it simple. 
There's a little more from Flem. Just, just, let's just have a dig in and have Mitch, Wasim, and Tom respond. Second thing, Stephen Fleming says, create an environment where the players feel a sense of belonging, which given the amount of cricket that's being played is sometimes a challenge. Now, you know Fleming, Fleming well, and you're also, I guess, well-versed with what CSK, we believe, tend to do differently. Emma is also mm. spoken of in that conversation, but players love their time at CSK, don't they? Yeah, a couple of things to unpack there. I, th I think, firstly, touch on um, the, the no analytics type yeah. scenario. And look, I think that's because you've had MS Dhoni behind the stumps, and he has this unique way of reading the game, making small adjustments in the field, communicating uh, to the bowler what he needs. And, and Gokhabal doesn't have that uh, intuition yet as a captain that MS Dhoni does. So maybe in the future they're going to have to bring those analytics into their preparation, which they don't have now. They're quite a no-meeting culture. Uh, the second thing to unpack there was, uh, look, it's, it's nice when you go into a, a culture where it's a, um, you're caring for the player, you've got the arm around you. Um, and, and what I did like about that as well is he also talks about no, tra no trainings, no, or optional training, sorry, yeah. um, but also making sure that if you do turn up to training, you know what's going to make you better at that training. Or even when you're not turning up to training, and this is what I found really interesting about that interview, is that even when you're away from training and you've taken the option, that you're still doing something to get better as well. Hmm. Uh, two players that you know quite well, two Mumbai players, have been the most recent beneficiaries of going to CSK and playing like they haven't anywhere else. Ajinkya Rahane, Shivam Dubey. And I mean, maybe it's lazy analysis sometimes to say things like, oh, only CSK can bring the best out of them. But is there some truth to it? with regards to those players at least? Well, I think the role clarity uh, more than anything. And, and I think the less head are there to make decision, it makes it easier. Mm. Uh, we being around in the, in the IPL system, uh, the more the coaches, you know, uh, makes the decision or, you know, it makes it more confusing. I mean, I've been part of that. So I feel Fleming and Dhoni are the two guys who makes the decision and everybody buys into that. Uh, I think that's very, very important. And the role clarity, again, uh, you know, Ajin Kirane last year said, even though he was out at the start of the IPL, but when he played, he was given an assurity uh, that he can play with freedom. Same with Shivam Dubey when he, when he talks about it, that he needs to come in at number four or five and he can go straight away. So I'm sure he was told that he'll be given an extended chances, which doesn't happen uh, in the other franchise. So that, that's very, very important, I feel. 22-23 numbers in front of you, Tom. Uh, and that's a marked difference or an improvement from the seasons before that. Do they now play a different season now because the expectations are suddenly high? I don't think we also had the expectations from Dubey and Rahane in last year's IPL and we were blown away by what we saw. Can they back that season up? I think they can, but they need to be aware, which I'm sure they are, that, that the opposition will look at them completely differently than what they have done in the past. You know, when you look at Rahani, you look at it as a pure player. He's been a great cricketer for India for a long period of time. But in, in T20 cricket, in the IPL, you know you can hold him. You can, you can keep him at the crease. You can hold him at a rel relatively modest strike rate. But he's now reinvented himself under the, the guidance of MS Dhoni and Stephen Fleming, where he has this freedom and the shackles have been sort of uh, thrown off. And suddenly... The opposition team can't go in there sort of thinking, oh, well, we can nearly, you know, hold Rahani here for, you know, four or five overs, build pressure at the other end, and suddenly, you know, things start turning your way. So teams will address, you know, both those players differently, having seen what they've done over recent times. I mean, more than uh, those two guys you mentioned, getting the performance out of Tushar Deshpande, that's, that's very, very, you know, unique uh, because he's been into the other franchise, he's... He was completely, lost uh, you know, lost. Yeah. But to get him to into the top three wicket takers, I mean, that's that's the quality you need. And keep it simple. That doesn't happen in in franchise cricket. So that's <laughs> that's very very important. You seem to speak from emotion and experience <laughs> over there. No, I'm just kidding. But yeah, they're known to be an, an outstanding franchise. Can they keep that going with the very recent change of guard? And it did take us by surprise. But Rutraj Gaikot will have some time here because RCB. A batting first. Now, this is a fascinating conversation with Tom, Mitch, and Wasim. If you want to join it, get part of it, uh, just send us your questions. Use uh, the hashtag timeout on our social handles. And if you're watching us live on YouTube, just get it in into the comment section. I'll try and take as many as I can. Not 
If not on this show, then certainly the shows to come. We'd love for all of you to be part of the conversation. RCB fans are always uh, up for a conversation or two amongst the big questions surrounding their franchise ahead of this season is the big trade of Cameron Green and where he possibly bats. How does that affect the rest of RCB's batting? Now, Mumbai used him quite steadily at number three. Yes, there were times he batted differently when Surya had to be promoted. There was a steady opening pair there. His, most, uh, his, his best returns, Tom, come in uh, at that number three. Now, Patidar's back. Kohli likes to open, Faf likes to open, Green can open, Green can also play anywhere in the top seven. How do we go with this? Well, for me, it, it speaks volumes, those numbers at number three. You're striking at 161, averaging nearly 50. There's not too many number threes in the IPL can have achieved that or will achieve that. So, to me, that screams that he has to bat three for RCB. I don't think he's going to. But I think I think you know that tells you a lot. Just Where do you think, he, you think he? I think he's four. going to bat five. Oh, five. Mm-hmm. I think he's going to bat five. I think uh, Paradise is going to bat three. Maxwell, Maxwell mm-hmm. four, mm-hmm. and I think Green's going to bat five. They want Green to play a role that he hasn't done yet. So yeah. it's it's putting someone in a seat on the bus that he's not familiar with, mm-hmm. and that is one recipe for disaster right from the get go. Yeah. You know, you, you ideally want people understanding what their role is and being familiar with that role and having had previous success. And we, we are only talking about what Fleming and Doney have done at CSK, keep it simple. And that is a great example of keeping it simple. You know, this guy is a clearly a, 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 a great talent. Yes, he's young, but he's shown already what he's capable of doing. Because, I mean, they could make a case and justify it either way. It's never easier to new franchise. You've got Patidar and you've got Maxwell. But your quick summations on that, Green at? Yeah, look, I think Green coming to RCB, while it's a bonus, he's a great player, as Tom talks about, actually probably creates more problems. Um, ideally, they've got four overseas fast bowlers, and, and I feel like for 16 seasons they've gone back to the same well and, and stacking their batting and expecting that they're going to get the same result, when really they need to play the two overseas fast bowlers to give themselves the best chance of having a good run at the title. I'll just save you, save you there because confirmation of the teams, it is going to be what we expected. While there's, you'd love for them to try and fit two fast bowlers, overseas fast bowlers, as Mitch McClanagan says. But Faf, Kohli, Patidar, Maxwell, Cameron Green, so you'd think he might bat exactly where Tom Moody says at five. Dinesh Karthik in what would be his last season. Anuj Rawat is there as the only left-hand option in the top seven. Karan Sharma, given the nod as the, the leg spinner. Alzari Joseph, Mayank Dagar, who was a trade from the Sunrisers, and Mohamed Siraj. Uh, given this is their batting first 11, one could assume the extra seamer could come in in the second innings, either Vaishak or Yash Dayal, who was brought into the team. So that is somewhat unexpected lines, but Anuj Rabat is the man given the nod here, not Mahipal Omroran. He's the only left hander. How do you see him being used? I think he did well. Anuj Rabat, with whatever opportunities he got, uh, you know, late, later half of the season. So I think it makes sense. Uh, uh, Lomroor also is, is a fine player, but I think Anuj Rawat, uh, you know, he likes to bat at the top of the year, but there's no space for Cameron Green, so leave alone yeah. Anuj Rawat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think it, it makes sense. So Rawat yeah. would be a number seven here, or could he be used as a floater, uh, especially given the I, right-handedness I, of this lineup? I don't see him, you know, getting promoted ahead of the top six that they have. So they, they might they might use him if there's a certain situation with spin matchup, because one of the Yes, mm. that RCB top six looks formidable, but they're all right-handed. All right-handed. Mm. Yeah. So that is a real issue. We saw what happened with Sunrisers last year when they were stacking their top order as all right-handers. It became mm. they become an easy target to to match up against. Yeah, they. What I, you know, don't want them to do is is hold Dinesh Karthik for too too late, uh, because he's a fine player of spin. So sometimes, uh, you know, teams stack up with spin. I think they can promote Dinesh mm. Karthik ahead because he can sweep, he can reverse sweep, he can disturb uh, the spinners. But some, you know, in the last two or three seasons, he just they just hold him to to do the finisher's job, and I think that that's not a good idea. Mm. All right, uh, as I give you some interesting news from the Chennai Super Kings. Uh, firstly, I can confirm a debut for Rachin Ravindran, which we expected. We think he'll partner the new captain with Raj Gaikwad at the top of the order. Uh, Rahane and Daryl Mitchell feature now. Mitchell. Also for his CSK debut, big money signing. And the Kiwi love continues at uh, the Super Kings. Debut for Sami Rizvi, also picked up for good money, hard-hitting middle-order bat. 
uh, will be around Ravindra Jadeja and MS Dhoni. No Shardul Thakur, even though they are bowling first. There is no Shardul Thakur in that team. Wonder if it's an injury that he's carrying. And Mustafizur Rahman, they'd be happy he's fit and ready to take uh, the field along with Tushar Desh Pandey, who Masim Jafar mentioned was so good for them last year. No, Shardul is a, is a pretty big one. But that's the overseas contingent they've gone with, Mitch. Uh, and big day for both Ratchan Ravindra and Daryl Mitchell. Yeah, look, Ratchan uh, comes in for Conway with that broken thumb. And I think he's going to come out of the gates charging. He, he's, he's performed in these conditions in the, in the World Cup. Uh, he's batted well in Chennai as well. And I think he's going to perform straight off the bat. Daryl Mitchell is the one for me that uh, I've got a question mark over. He stumbled a little bit once he got uh, that price tag over his name for New Zealand. And, and it's the IPL when the, all the pressure's on you, all the eyes are on you. When you've got that big money tag, it's a, it's a different beast. So it'll be unfamiliar waters, but he is a very confident player. So he might be able to deal with that pressure. A couple of big absentees there, though. Shardul from a bowling crunch and Shivam Dube, unless he comes in as the, as the impacts up. They are bowling first, we must remember again. Is Dubé fit, though? Yeah, that's a question. We're just yeah. waiting for confirmation yeah. on it. I, I'm not sure he's he's fit. But we can certainly assume Shardul isn't. Yeah, Shardul, but where do you fit him into that side? You know, I, I'm looking at that side and thinking, Shardul, Shardul, where does he go in that side? Well, like, it could be Tushar Deshpande or Shardul. So they've picked up probably Tushar ahead of Shardul. Now, the, given this is, again, their bowling first 11, we just remember and rewire mm. ourselves to the IPL. So you would think they would want to bring in a batter, a specialist batter yeah. in the chase and not, yeah. and they're not light on bowling there where maybe you'll have a couple of overs of Deepak Chahir or three or four overs and then impacts up Shardul Thakur and have him as a hitter going into the next. Well, he's come into the tournament in form. He's, he's got Definitely a couple of runs, runs isn't he, in yeah. domestic the Ranji trophy. cricket. Absolutely. I watch that very closely. <laughs> <laughs> Tushar Deshpande got 100 as well in that Ranji yeah. trophy at number 11 yeah. in what yeah. was a record. I reckon uh, you'd get runs in that game. <laughs> Uh, it was it was challenging, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it, Tom. Right. Uh, but that's something we'll have to keep an eye out for. Who's fit, who's not, what, how the impact sub uh, plays out uh, is, I guess, anyone's guess. Uh, big matchup, though, when RCB plays CSK. So it's a grandstand fixture. It's usually headlined with how Ravindra Jadeja and Glenn Maxwell end up uh, getting the better of each other. Now, have a look at that for just a lopsided uh, matchup in a way. Six times in 11 innings at an average of 11 for Maxwell against Jadeja. It's just going to happen. You just think it'll happen. Mitch McClanagan, thoughts on that? <laughs> uh, look, I, when he comes on to bowl, it's, and Maxwell's batting against him, it just looks like an ego play from Maxwell. And, and for him, that's what he likes to do. He likes to take on the best player in the team and try to dominate. And, I can't see him playing any differently tonight. So when these two match up against each other, it's going to be fireworks, that's for sure. Yeah, he's also amongst our leading bowlers uh, as per our Quicken for ratings. Again, taking all the smart stats into account. He's in the top five, Jadeja. And it wasn't a long time back, Tom, where we, weren't, we were discussing the value of Jadeja, the T20 bowler. Is he as good? Can he always give you four overs? He's amongst the best in the last two years. Mark yeah, I think he's a gun. Mm. Uh, and I, I think the reason those numbers with Maxwell has show the way they do is because Jadeja is a very difficult um, spin bowler to hit square of the wicket. Mm -hmm. Maxwell's strength, one of his main strengths against spin is his sweep and his reverse sweep and his reverse slog. So try to do, do that against Jadeja, well, you know, good yeah. luck to you. You're not going to, you might hit one or two, but he's going to have the better of you. Okay, fast approaching the first ball of the first game of IPL 2024. Something new we're going to do, and this is something that We'll put Mitch McClanig and Tom Moody and Wasim Jaffer to the real test. There's a lovely award I'd like to tell you, gents, that you will be uh, in pole position to win towards the end of this tournament. It's a long way away. Mm -hmm. But that will be on the basis of how good your, your predictions are in terms of players that will have a big impact. We are now entering for the first time this season the Impact Zone. Very simple. As you would have followed over recent years through ESPN Trick and Four Scorecards, we try and rate to better assess the 20 performances. You can't really read them through conventional stats. So we have our impact numbers. You'll have a look at that in our MVP column. We try and use our smart stats to tell you who's had a bigger impact. So now Tom, Mitch and Wasim are going to pick three players every day that they're on our show in our pre-show as to who they think will have the highest impact and who, whoever ends up with the highest score gets the points, and we'll revisit this post-match. The way this works is I want you to pick one batter, one bowler, and one all-rounder each. 
there can be no repeats. All right. Mm -hmm. So we'll make sure everyone has a chance. It's like a draft. Tom Moody was part of the 100 draft a few days back. Good luck for you, Tom, defending champions and all that. You should do this easy. Uh, I'm going to have <laughs> someone start, though. And the way I'm going to start that is by a quiz. A simple one line, a simple question. Whoever answers first wins it. Who is the oldest player at RCB this season? Puff. No. Close. Come on. Go. Keep guessing. No problem. Uh, keep going. No idea. There's one man older than. Well, Tom, you can start. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Sorry. No ball. It is Faf. I, was <laughs> about DK. I on, thought DK. Man. I thought DK was older than him. Oh my God. All right. Oh, so Wasim. Wasim gets it absolutely right. I didn't even see Faf there. All right. Thirty-nine. It doesn't look old. Okay. So Wasim will get to go first. Uh, it's time for you to pick your. Let's go with batters first, mm -hmm. shall we? Wasim. Uh, I'll go with Virat. Okay, you'll go with Virat Kohli. So Kohli's taken. We're going this way, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, we are. Yeah, beautiful. Mitch I'd like McClanagan. <laughs> uh, Maxwell. As your batter is Maxwell. Lots of options for you, Tom. I'll go with uh, the debutante, mm. Repton. Okay, no takers for Gaikwa. See, I can't believe you haven't gone for your fellow countrymen. Anyway, <laughs> that's fine. There's a tactic fine. to it. No, yeah, no. There's a tactic to it. All right, in which case, we will now go to uh, the bowlers. And since Wasim went first here... Are two of you happy to give this or should I ask another question? No, you, you can go. You All right, can go, go reverse. Go no, there you go. All right, yeah. Mitch, bowler. <laughs> uh, Shadeja. Okay, Jadeja oh. is McClanagan's bowler, so you can't pick that. Chaha. Deepak Chahar for Tom Moody. Oh. I'll, I'll go for Karan Sharma. Karan Sharma? Oh, okay. No takers for Mohammed Siraj or Alzari Joseph. I'm just mentioning it now. You can't pick them. All right, and finally, Tom Moody for the all rounders. You can go first. Uh, Jadeja. We can't repeat. Jadeja's taken. Can't repeat. Jadeja's taken, <laughs> so you can't take Jadeja. No, you can't. Yeah, we need Rules of the game, Individual mate. players, yeah. Tactics. Tactics. <laughs> He's taken. Who took him? Oh, I took him as a, he, as a bowler. Isn't he down as an all-rounder? I took yeah, him as a bowler. But, but that's good enough. I'm happy. He may not <laughs> No, but he's taken him out of... That's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go with Cameron Green. Oh, very good. Mm. See, you have to play around here. Come on. All right. Uh, I, need I need to see just yeah. a minute. Oh. All rounder options. So Maxwell's taken. Rachin Ravindran's taken. Jadeja has taken. Green's taken. So, so who's left? We're running out of all rounder. Get a all rounder from another team. <laughs> yeah. No, no. I'll, we, we'll have to expand our horizon a little bit. Daryl um, Mitchell. Daryl Mitchell features. Yes. Yeah, he would be an all rounder. Let's have a look at the <laughs> RCB team. Um, Mayung Dagger is Dagger, someone who considered there. as an all rounder. Yeah. Uh, wicket keepers become all rounders. That works. Oh, you're going to take him in? DK mm. or MS? No, I'll, I'll go with uh, the name you said before. Which one? Dagger. Uh, Mayan Mitchell. Dagger? Mitchell. Daryl Mitchell? Oh, that's clever. <laughs> that's clever, down, isn't Mitchell. it? All right. Mitchell for Wasim. And um, now over to you, Mitchell. I'm going to go with Dinesh Karthik. Dinesh Karthik in his last season. Okay, no takers for MS. Right. That was hard work. I think we'll get the hang of this as it goes <laughs> off. Well, it helps if you know the rules. Eh? I'm just making them up as we go along. <laughs> that puts me in the category of mainstream administrators these days. Mm. Yeah. Right, I'll leave it there. And let's get a first innings prediction for what it's worth. Uh, RCB innings is already underway. So we've had some cricket. Uh, what's Score. He? RCB, first innings? 185. Okay, and Kohli and Faf have come out, just in case we were expecting any surprises. There, 185, that's good score. It's here at Chepok. Yeah, 165. 165 and... 149. Okay. Uh, I can see where you stand after predicting the CSK will finish outside the top four. They'll at least win this one. It's <laughs> what you perhaps mean. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tom Moody, Mish McLean, again, Wasim Jaffer. That's a lovely start on this uh, slightly new, but your very own Maruti Suzuki Arena presents ESPN Trick Info Timeout. Download the mobile app. It'll have you covered with everything that's been that's happening around the IPL. There's so much cricket with all the teams making their go over this opening weekend. We will see you for our live show where we hope you join us for the conversation and some questions to our panel. And that'll be at the end of uh, the RCB. Hot and techy breath up the city bird SUV.